Part 3 Technique Application Carefully examine fetal presentation. When using a soft silicon cup like the silk cup, squeeze the sides of the cup together to reduce its size before advancing towards the fetal head. You may lubricate the cup using a suitable obstetric antiseptic cream. Position the cup on the flexion point. An effort should be made to place the cup approximately 3 cm in front of the posterior fontanelle. Gently palpate around the rim of the cup to check that no parts of the cervix or vagina are covered by the cup. Start the pump using the foot pedal. And set a light preliminary vacuum of approximately minus 20 kilopascal, minus 150 millimeter of mercury. Palpate again around the rim of the cup to double check that no soft tissues have been trapped beneath it. Contractions With the onset of a contraction, rapidly raise the vacuum to minus 60 to minus 80 kilopascal. That is minus 450 to minus 600 millimeter of mercury. The vacuum should be increased rapidly and in one step. A gradual increase is not recommended. Adhesion will be satisfactory as soon as the necessary vacuum is reached. Important! Never exceed a vacuum of minus 80 kilopascal, the equivalent of minus 600 millimeter of mercury. Apply traction in time with the patient's contractions. Hold the silk cup with one hand and assist the baby's forward movements by maintaining steady traction. During traction, place the index finger of your free hand at the junction of the cup edge and the fetal head. You will be able to feel if the cup is holding firmly and also check that the entire head and not only the caput succedaneum is responding to the traction. With each successive contraction, draw the infant's head gently over the perineum. If the fetal head does not follow when traction is applied, check that the traction is parallel to the birth canal. The mother can normally bear down two to three times during a contraction. Traction should be applied throughout this period. At the end of a contraction, reduce or stop traction appropriately. Sometimes it may be helpful to apply gentle traction between contractions, just to prevent the head from sliding back. This can help dilate the soft tissues. Never exceed 10 minutes of cumulative traction time. Possible difficulties If the cup separates from the fetal scalp, it may be due to the wrong technique being used. Should this occur, check for trauma to the fetus scalp before reapplying the cup. Avoid sudden jerks. Apply an appropriate steady and constant traction. During steady traction, if the adhesive force is about to be broken, air will be sucked under the cup, causing it to emit an audible warning hiss. If this happens, traction should then be discontinued and the cup allowed to adhere firmly again. Correct the direction of traction and resume when the patient's next contraction begins. Episiotomy 
The need for episiotomy must be considered in each individual case. The obstetrical instrument does not require routine episiotomy. In certain cases of severe fetal distress, however, episiotomy may facilitate more rapid delivery. Delivery Delivery of the head can normally be achieved in three tractions, within a maximum of 15 to 20 minutes. Once the head has been delivered, reduce the vacuum to zero. Switch off the vacuum pump and remove the cup. The shoulders and trunk are delivered in the same way as in spontaneous delivery. Post delivery. Document the use of the suction cup and notify the nursery staff as per hospital protocol. These recommendations are intended only as general guidelines. Practitioners must refer to current institutional and medically recognised guidelines that address suction cup